You know, the Lord said that he would not leave us as orphans, but his Holy Spirit would live with us and in us in John 14, 17 and 18. And we live by the blessed hope of his glorious appearing so that we keep watching and looking for him on a daily basis. I think it's really incredible all of the creation that God made and I love this big beautiful tree that I'm sitting on a branch of it because it's it's got very long branches let me show you <laughs> so it reminds me of our trees at home many of these big trees were cut down but I believe they have a place in the New Jerusalem, the Garden of Eden, restored. And it doesn't matter how we're looking to the right and to the left at every evil thing that's happening in the world, including, you know, threats and wars and rumors of wars and things, you know. The Lord told us to think about whatever is beautiful, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is honorable, whatever is righteous, think on these things. And so we're supposed to put our minds on good things. Even if we're going through bad things, we can focus on the Lord and walk in the path that he has set for us. I know it's often very hard, but you know, when I was talking about long suffering being a fruit of the spirit the other day, you have to think about the fact that the apostles, they all were martyred and John survived being boiled in oil and died at an old age. But we are not immune from troubles and, you know, life happens to us. And this earth will be under the curse until the Lord comes and makes all things new. So we just are watching and waiting for that day and to try to keep our minds focused on the fact that he's preparing a place for us. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you so that I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. So that means he's coming to take us to that place. A lot of people who don't believe in a rapture don't even look at that scripture, don't even realize that he's saying he's going to come and take us there. So this is our blessed hope. And, you know, we're hopeful that maybe it's this spring that we could be taken to be with the Lord. You know, I told you about when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night that they came to arrest him, that's the night that the Jews say is the night of watching for the Lord to come. So I really kind of believe now that that could be the very night that we're supposed to watch. And that's when Jesus went into the garden and told his disciples, couldn't you stay awake one hour? And he kept doing that three times. And um, that was the night of watching for the Lord to come. And if the Jews believe that that's the night of watching and Jesus kept saying, watch, then maybe this is the time we need to look up for our redemption draws nigh. I always loved being in my garden. You know, the problem with this place is this is right near a highway. <laughs> This is a lot of traffic noise, but, um, you know, just being out here in the fresh air is nice. So I just wanted to give you a little hopeful message that the Lord is coming. Now, the thing is, is I left out a little part of that. It's the Jewish belief that on that night of watching, it's specifically watching for God's redemption. And what happened that night? It was the Passover Seder, and Jesus and the apostles went to the 
Garden of Gethsemane singing the Hallel, they were singing about the redemption by the Lord. And there they were with him, and he did not drink of the third cup in the Passover Seder. It's the cup of redemption because he's going to drink that cup with us when he comes to take us to be at the wedding supper of the Lamb. So the Jewish night of watching for the redemption is the very night the apostles and Messiah Jesus were singing the Hallel that speaks of the redemption. And so they received the redemption of the Lord on that night. And it's delayed because they haven't accepted their king for Israel. But those who have accepted his bride's price, we will go up to the wedding supper of the lamb and drink that cup of redemption with him in the Passover Seder. And when he comes to get us to take us where he is in his father's house. So I hope this blesses you to know this, that that there was a specific night of waiting for the redemption and they were singing about it as they went to the Garden of Gethsemane just before Jesus paid the bride's price on the cross. And then he died and was buried and rose again on the third day on the Feast of First Fruits as the first fruits of redemption. Wow, so it's all a pretty amazing picture. So I hope this gives you a little bit of hope and a little bit of joy to think about Passover that's coming up pretty soon and I hope this uh, night of redemption could definitely be the night of watching for the rapture so that was the night of the Garden of Gethsemane so I'll talk to you a little bit later and I hope you're blessed by these words What did God bring me? Bunny, bunny, come down. I see you, bunny. You gonna come down and talk to Kimmy? Hmm? What you doing? You should go get you something and bring it out here, huh? Now I have proof. Show my friends that I have a bunny. A little angel bunny from God. Honey bunny bunny. Look, my little bunny came out to pose for me. Hi, angel bunny. God's gift to Kimmy. Little angel bunny. Well, you can come live in my bushes over there. Would you like to do that? It's nice and safe. There's no predators or anything. God bless you, child. God. Little angel bunny. Little heavenly angel bunny. She's sleeping. <laughs> Close your little precious eyes. Say a little prayer before you go to sleep. <laughs> I'm so grateful that I finally managed to catch her on the camera. You're just a little gift from God, aren't you? To Kimmy. Just a little precious gift. <laughs> I love you, little friend. Love you, little friend. Aww. Such a sweet friend. 